Hi, this is Jeff West, and the purpose of this video is to show you how you can quickly get started with UserGrid using Apigee 127. UserGrid is a backend as a service uh, framework that you can run either in the cloud or on your local machine to do development. Uh, and Apigee also has a free version of this on uh, Apigee Edge. Uh, we also have a paid version that we do the hosting and uh, can provide a lot of great benefit uh, for you uh, if you're interested. Um, but I'm not here to sell you Apigee stuff. I'm here to show you how to use UserGrid. It's completely open source. Um, you can use it. It's, uh, it has a, a lot of great participation uh, from the community. And uh, we want to make it easy to use with A127 as well. What I'll be doing is I'll be working from the command line. I already have Apigee 127 installed. And uh, there's a guide here for downloading and starting user grid using 127. Uh, and basically what I'll be doing is going through these steps. So as I mentioned, I already have A127 installed. And you'll see that there is an option to do things with user grid. So we do A127 user grid. Here we see we can start it, stop it, uh, open the portal, display the PID, and also download it. So you can download it manually or you can have it downloaded uh, for you automatically. I'm going to show you how to do it manually. So do A127 user grid download. This will download it from the internet. Uh, if it is already there, then it will skip the download process. The speed at which this happens depends on your connection speed. The, uh, we also do a checksum to make sure that the jar file is not corrupt. Uh, and we can see that it places the jar file here. You'll also see that there is a uh, portal uh, set of artifacts and pages. Uh, it's an Angular app that uh, provides some, some management capabilities for user grid. Uh, and I'll show you how to use that as well. So now I have user grid downloaded and I can do A127 user grid start. This requires Java to be on your path. If you don't have Java on your path, you'll probably get an error saying that it can't find Java or some other uh, some other potential error, errors are if there's a port conflict um, or uh, if there doesn't if it doesn't have permission to open a, open a port due to firewall or something like that. So here we have uh, user grid started. I'll do a couple things real quick. Uh, Twenty seven user grid. So in this directory, this is where you, where you will find the artifacts associated with user grid. Here's the jar file. Here's where the portal uh, is stored. There is a log file where you can see the uh, user grid log output. There is also a PID file. Let me see this is uh, 141515. And we see this is Java running user grid. And here's the jar. So that's kind of a quick orientation to user grid, uh, the files. Uh, let's take a look in the temp directory. So this is where the actual runtime artifacts and configuration for user grid are stored in this configuration. Here we have a Cassandra file that has Cassandra uh, settings. Uh, the data is stored here in the data directory. And then depending, of course, on how much data you put in user grid, this directory may be small or large. Uh, and then there are some logging properties. So I can do, again, A127 is on my path, so I can do user grid portal from any directory, and it will open up the user grid portal. This is a very similar portal to what you would find on Apigee's hosted version, but this is the, this is the complete open source version. So you have test and test. Those are the default user. Uh, so we have a test user and a super user. So when we start it here, we'll see that the user grid super user and test org is here. So I'm going to log in with test and test. And here we go. Here's the landing page for user grid. User grid is a really awesome product uh, uh, project uh, with uh, our Baz being the, the product. You can configure uh, different applications and different orgs, and it's basically a multi-tenant. 
uh, backend as a service that you can use for um, building social graph type applications. There are also lots of SDKs that you can use to build iOS apps, Android apps, you know, HTML5, lots of different kinds of apps. And uh, you can also, using the portal here, you can create collections, um, you can uh, query. So here I'll just uh, do a quick user query. Uh, and we can see, so let's say, actually I'm going to create a user. We'll do name is Jeff. Yeah, property name, username. Uh, and we'll do username Jeff. So what will happen is this will put the entity into user grid. And then we should be able to query it, query it back out. And you can you can create collections, you can manage collections, uh, do uh, inserts, leads, everything that you want to do to manage your collections here. So this is the same user grid that is uh, same API of user grid that you would have in the cloud if you're using Apigee service. You can of course uh, run this with your uh, with your own infrastructure if you so choose. You can also create as many apps as you want and create as many orgs as you want as well. So that's a quick intro to uh, user grid uh, using Average 127. And I'm going to go ahead and stop it. User grid, stop. And that will conclude the demo. Thanks.